हे गाइस वेलकम टू डेटा ट्रैक योर वन स्टॉप चैनल फॉर ऑल द डेटा साइंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग अपडेट्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल लुक एट डुएल ऑगमेंटेड टू टावर मॉडल फॉर ऑनलाइन लार्ज स्केल रिकमेंडेशन इट्स अ पेपर फ्रॉम म्यूटेन एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट द टू टावर मॉडल आर्किटेक्चर टू टावर मॉडल आर्किटेक्चर इज वेरी पॉपुलर इन रिकमेंडेशन सिस्टम रिकमेंडेशन सिस्टम कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू पार्ट रेट्रीवल एंड रैंकिंग इन रेट्रीवल आउट ऑफ मिलियंस ऑफ आइटम्स द मोस्ट रेलिवेंट वंस आर रिट्रीव्ड एंड इन रैंकिंग दे आर रैंक्ड टू मैक्सिमाइज द कन्वर्जन सो टू टावर मॉडल आर्किटेक्चर इज पॉपुलर फॉर द रिट्रीवल साइड ऑफ रिकमेंडेशन सिस्टम्स वेयर इट कैन रिट्रीव द रेलिवेंट आइटम्स आउट ऑफ मिलियंस ऑफ आइटम्स एंड इन दिस पेपर फ्रॉम म्यूटन वर्ट दे हैव डन इज दे हैव एक्सटेंडेड द वनीला टू टावर मॉडल आर्किटेक्चर फॉर बेटर परफॉर्मेंस एंड द टेक्निक्स दे हैव यूज इज एडेप्टिव म्यूमिक मैकेनिज्म एंड कैटेगरी अलाइनमेंट लॉस यू विल अंडरस्टैंड बोथ द टू ब्यूटिफुल टेक्निक्स इन डिटेल्स सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड first of all how i came across this paper i was reading the reddit blog uh, how the reddit's ads recommendation system works and they had mentioned that they have used uh, dual augmented two tower model architecture which is this uh, taken ideas from this paper and implemented yes so i was going through this red reddit blog where they have mentioned that for the retrieval side they use dual uh, augmented two tower model architecture and that is how i came across this paper which is from mutan and what is mutan mutan is a uh, chinese website chinese e-commerce website uh, which sells lot of products and few more things uh, it's a it's a kdd paper kdd is a prestigious conference and it was published in 2021 and the data sets used so the paper has shown the enhancement they have done on two tower model architecture performance on their own data set and also they have used an amazon open source data set i also want to talk about this amazon open source data set uh, because it can help you in your uh, self projects if you are wanting to do so this is a data set from amazon and amazon has open sourced it uh, it's a very interesting data set because they have given you four type of uh, data points and the data set is about query an item when user search for something in the website he gets some results right for example you typed shoes you you got the results if you typed nike shoes and you got nike shoes it's an exact match if you typed nike shoes but let's say you got adidas shoes it's a substitute and if you typed for shoes but you got socks which is complementary like shoes and socks right and if you typed shoes and something irrelevant you got then it's irrelevant so this four type of data points are there in this uh, data set which you can use no, for a lot of interesting projects and after going through this paper in today's video in the next video we will implement our on two tower model architecture um, in this using this data set and we will implement a search query item data set where the one of the tower is search query and other uh, tower is the item the relevant item and it will retrieve the most relevant items out of millions of items uh, in in a very scalable manner so that we will do in the next video stay tuned coming back to the uh, content of this video so we will go through this paper which is dual augmented two tower model architecture from mutan and they have used their own data set as well as they have used amazon data set and uh, uh, also i have created a video on instagrams uh recommendation system this was one of the blogs from instagram and i created video out of it where they have beautifully explained the whole recommendation system i will suggest to go through this video as well the reason being one part of the video talks about retrieval systems and what are the challenges of retrieval system and why how this is linked with the today's discussion because uh, in this paper also they have explained the shortcomings of retrieval system similar to what instagram uh video head and how they overcame it with adaptive mimic mechanism and category alignment loss but we will see in details and also i have a video on uh, two tower retrieval architecture of twitter where the two towers are user and user for this set of users whom should be recommended to follow right so there is this two tower recomm uh, recommendation system for uh twitter as well where the two towers are quite different they are user user instead of search query and item so i will recommend you can go through this as well i will add the link of all the uh things that i have shown in the description section so let's get started and uh go through the paper 
so uh, what i have done i have highlighted some of the important portions of the paper first of all uh, this paper is from mutant which is a uh, chinese website and mutant is a chinese shopping platform for locally found consumer products and retail services including entertainment dining delivery travel so they deal with lot of categories and also in this paper uh, we will be discussing about two towers so two type of entities but general it can be generalized to any type of entities Th those any two type of entities could be user and item like for this set of users which items to recommend uh, or it can be for this search query which item should be retrieved or it could be user user as we i was explaining in case of twitter it was for users who other users to recommend so these two towers represent two entities which can be uh, generalized to any two type of entities and for this paper mostly i will be referring the search query item where you can assume there is a search query and we want to retrieve the most relevant items now uh, so this uh, paper is uh, suggesting a two tower model architecture and enhancement of it which is highly scalable and um, now the shortcomings of current two tower models is there is lock uh, there is lack of interaction between the two towers so there are two towers in first tower the first tower um, features will go in second tower the second towers features will go but there is no cross feature what do we mean by cross feature we'll see in more details at, uh, in uh, the second section but the cross uh, interactions are missing and that is what instagram blog also had had revealed so you can go through the instagram video as well this paper which is dual augmented two tower model architecture overcomes this hindrance of uh, lack of cross tower features using adaptive mimic mechanism and also the paper talks about uh, not all the categories are popular some categories may be more popular than the other for example in amazon let's say uh, grocery items are more popular than electronics or electronics is more popular than uh, makeup items and so on so always there is a uh, popularity difference how the category alignment loss can uh, come into picture and mitigate the issue where for some of the minority categories there is no enough data how can we use the learning of a popular category to better enhance a minor category so these are the two uh, uh, two high level concepts that the paper introduced but we will see in details and also you will understand what is that lack of cross uh, category interaction features so let's start the real part the introduction part recommendation systems are very important to filter out uh, relevant items from millions of items and uh, it's a two phase architecture where the there are two towers and followed by retrieval there is a ranking where the uh, retrieved items are ranked for a retrieval system its uh, success is defined by the quality of candidates retrieved in the retrieval stage right the the quality of items retrieved, retrieved should be very high and it should be relevant and two tower model architecture is uh, preferred because it's a very scalable retrieval model and mostly uh, deep neural networks are preferred for a two tower model architecture the reason is that these deep neural networks can learn embeddings and those embeddings are very scalable because once you have the uh, two embed uh, two embeddings of both the towers what you can do is one you can keep online as soon as the query comes query can be anything right as soon as the query comes you get the embeddings out of it it's a it's kept online while the other uh, uh, tower which is let's say items you know these are my items for the current time stamp so those embeddings you can just save in a keys value store uh, and do uh, as soon as the online query comes get its embedding and do a fast approximate nearest neighbor search to find the relevant uh, items and also i have videos on approximate nearest neighbors using uh, annoy and fire uh, which is uh, facebook's library so i will add link of those videos also in the description section now coming back so we know that uh, for two tower model architecture deep neural networks are preferred because they are very scalable they generate embeddings and one tower can be kept online other tower can be kept offline and fast approximate nearest neighbor can be done in real time when the user comes or visits the platform now comes the interesting part uh, that what are these cross interaction features which are missing so they have given an example that let's say in one tower we have the search queries in other tower we have the items let's say the search query is 
red kurta now we will convert it into some embeddings and all these items also will convert into embeddings and do a dot product to find which are the relevant items but let's say one of the uh, item it comes relevant for or it is relevant we from the past data we know that whenever this query comes this item gets clicked so that item is relevant for red kurta red kurta man and maroon kurta man boys for all these three queries let's say that item uh, which is a red or maroon kurta is relevant but we are not using this information that these are the three queries for which it comes out to be relevant we are just using the kurta's features in the uh, in the item tower we are just using the item uh, features but not using this information that for these queries it can be useful it is useful in past so that cross interaction query cross item features are missing and same thing we can say for the query as well uh, like uh, these are the set of items which mostly come relevant for this query so let's put some kind of information of these items also in the query tower so that is not happening the query tower just takes query features item tower just takes item features we convert it into embedding and do a dot product but this kind of cross features that if we know from past that uh, for this query this set of items always come relevant and for this uh, set of items uh, this query is relevant and we can use some kind of cross features that is missing and that is what they have solved using the adaptive mimic mechanism so now we have understood what is a what is um, cross features and also i want to explain that why the two towers are kept very simple because we always know that we are using this two tower model architecture to generate embedding and one of the towers will be kept offline one of the towers will be kept kept online so purposefully for this uh, fast retrieval and scaling this approach is used but the approach that they have suggested with which they are using this kind of cross features that is also uh, pretty much scalable because of the way they have beautifully uh, developed it so let's see all of those so uh, they have said that using this kind of cross features that is having dual augmented two tower model architecture the advantage is it provides a deeper insights into the information interaction of two tower models in the retrieval task otherwise that cross interaction was missing and secondly it produces better item representation when the category distribution is extremely imbalanced okay so uh, let's see the model architecture and we will understand in more details so previously in two tower model architecture only the query features will go we will get an embedding and we will condense it do an l2 normalization similarly we will take the item features get a condensed embedding do an l2 normalization and do a dot product why this l2 normalization is done because we are taking a dot product we know a dot b is equal to a magnitude b magnitude cos theta now if i put normalization and uh, then it will become a by magnitude of a b by magnitude of b right so uh, what i am trying to say is that if you have normalized the two vectors their dot product will always represent the cos cos theta which is between 0 and 1 which you can take as a proxy of probability and you can apply a cross entropy loss to ensure that dot product is uh, representing the cos cosine similarity we do an l2 normalization now this was the two tower model architecture uh, if you ignore this uh, blue and green boxes this was the vanilla two tower architecture but with this dual to augmented two tower model architecture they have introduced this blue and uh, green boxes and you can see that some cross uh, features are flowing from here uh, from here to this side and from here to this side and this is the cross interaction features they try to bring and let's understand the mathematics of it first of all first they have defined the symbolic representation that uh, u is representing the query set and v is representing the item set where n is the number of users or queries and m is the number of items so n user n users or n queries and m items and and uj and vj are the uj and vj are the query and item features you can see that you are query feature v is the item feature and uh, a part of it uh, there is also this au and av which represents the uh, cross interaction features and how it's derived we will look into that so uh, till now there is an embedding layer you take the use, uh, query features convert it into embedding you take the item features convert it into embedding 
and then uh, this augmented tower the final thing will look like the uh, embeddings plus au which is passed to the next layer similarly for item tower the item embedding plus av and uh, a plus av means concatenated av and passed to the next uh, layer okay that is clear now let's come to the uh, architecture which is you can see that the, this is passed to the first layer and then there is relu activation relu activation and finally normalization and then dot product now let's look at the interesting part how are these AU and AV which are the augmented vectors representing the cross features of the other tower uh, calculated. The estimated of augmented vectors AU and AV. First of all, let's understand what AU and AV is. AU is the augmented vector for the user or the query coming from the goodness of the other tower which is the item tower. Similarly, AV is the augmented Rep learned representation for this item learned from the uh, important queries of the other tower. So AU is for query, AV is for item and we design an adaptive mimic mechanism which integrates a mimic loss. Mimic loss aims to use the augmented vectors to fit all positive interaction in the other tower belonging to the corresponding query or item and this is the loss function. So we'll understand what we are uh, uh, they are trying to do here. Let's take the same example that uh, one of the item, it's, rep it's important or it's relevant for this type of queries which are uh, red kurta, red, uh, red kurta man and maroon kurta boys. So this item is important for all three of these queries. So let's go to the architecture. So query red kurta, red kurta man, maroon kurta. So this we will find what is the output here for all three of them. And we will try to bring that goodness which is uh, PU into AV, right? PU, the goodness of uh, this type of queries which are positive for this uh, item will bring the goodness that is PU into AV. So all the three items will have their own PU and we will want this AV to mimic all the three PUs. And how is that done? That is done through... Uh, this formula which is y a u plus 1 minus y p v minus p v let's say y was 1 because we said only the positive interaction so y was 1 that is for red kurta this item is relevant so y is equal to 1 we will get loss function equal to y equal to 1 so a u only a u plus uh, this term will become 0 right 1 minus 1 0 and uh, a u minus p v a u minus p v whole square so when will this loss be minimum when they, the two vectors are as similar as uh, possible right Similarly for AV also. So for uh, AV, uh, so, so basically you can see that cross AU is learning from PV and AV is learning from PU. So U, V, V, U. So uh, for a query, we try to learn all the items which have rel been relevant for this query in the past. Whatever their uh, condensed embedding, we try to bring that goodness here. And for this uh, item all the queries which were important we try to bring their goodness here uh, to uh, augmented vector and uh, how can this be implemented so all the other features are non id based just we are using the features of query which could be something like query length or um, what is the query embedding we can con convert the query into uh, embeddings we can take query length popularity of query this kind of non id features can be used to uh, get the query embeddings but the AU AU that we learn from the uh, relevant items needs to be ID based that is for each query ID we need to store its AU so in a way it's using both non ID based features and ID also because for each query we need to store the learned AU and for each item we need to store its learned AV and that is how it can be implemented. So this is the adaptive mimic mechanism where uh, for one of the tower, uh, we are bringing all the relevant items which have come in past, that's goodness into the augmented vector and similarly vice versa for the other tower. So now we have seen the adaptive mimic mechanism. So this is the loss function. Uh, so that is what they have further explained. If the label y equal to 1, av and au approach to the query embedding pu and pv because if it's positive, we want to bring all the goodness of the other uh, embedding here 
and if label y is equal to 0 the loss is equal to 0 you can see that if if y is equal to 0 this term will become 0 it will uh, this will become pv pv minus pv whole square so we are only bringing the goodness of embeddings which were relevant and not for other cases let's say sues uh, some uh, apple sues and apple they are irrelevant so loss will be zero so this loss will be zero but if it sues and uh, that nike sues was relevant clicked then we will try to uh, bring the goodness of that nike sues item to this uh, query of sues so only the uh, ones which were positive this loss exists otherwise the loss is zero so since the mimic loss is to update au and av we should freeze the value of pu and pv while learning uh the augmented vectors and it will help in uh, good gradient flow right so what they are saying is that when this this is loss function and it will learn through gradient descent so when we are learning au and av we can assume that these uh, pu and pv are freezed uh, whatever be the out, output here we can use that to flow in av we can freeze the weights and then learn au and av for a stable gradient flow now coming to the next interesting concept that they bring is category alignment so we have already seen the first concept adaptive mimic mechanism second is category alignment in category alignment what they do is they say that some of the categories are very popular and diverse for example food hotel movies in case of amazon it can be grocery item more popular than electronics electronics more popular than makeup and so on so some categories are more popular the two tower model will perform differently for different categories because there is more data for one of the categories less for the other category and so on so what they want to do is they want no, they don't want the minority categories to suffer that's why they have come up with this category alignment loss and what it does is it transfers the knowledge of category with more amount of data into category of uh, lesser data which is minority category so first of all they calculate this s major which is uh, nothing but uh, uh, the majority category so once we know which is the most popular category we will co compute c of that majority category what is c c is the covariance matrix c is the covariance matrix now let me uh, give an intuition what might be happening here so for that majority category i have lot of items and all those items are let's say of 128 dimension or d dimension uh, each item can be thought of a single data point now i have all these items for this majority category uh, and with each item is of d dimension i can calculate the covariance right how each dimension uh, varies with the other dimension so that the covariance matrix will always be of d cross d similarly even for the minority category i may have lesser items but the dimension will be d only and i will have the covariance matrix there as well so what we are saying the a covariance that how the two dimensions are varying with each other it should be very similar to that of the majority category so basically if we take the covariance matrix d cross d we can take only any i or j index and take the variance of it so how the variance is uh, behaving between the two dimensions same behavior we will want in the minority category as well and it's seen that doing this the uh, minority category also gets better and the embeddings learned for the minority category are also more relevant so this is the category alignment loss and i would say this is not a very strange concept this kind of concepts is already used in knowledge distillation as well i have a video on knowledge distillation as well so one of the ways in which from bigger model we try to learn the smaller model is we see that uh, within a layer of that large uh, model so layer will have layer weights and weights can be thought of a matrix so if we take the uh, correlation between two dimensions of that weight matrix we would uh, want the weight matrix correlation to be similar to as the weight matrix uh, correlation in a smaller model just that the dimension of two weight matrix may be uh, different but we can just condense the bigger matrix in in a smaller dimension and take the correlation and we would want similar type of correlation in a smaller models weight matrix as well so this is also used in knowledge distillation to ensure that the smaller model that, that that is the student model learning well from a bigger teacher model so this type of concept is used there as well i have a video on it i will add the link of that also in the description similar idea is used here that uh, a majority category may have many items we can calculate the covariance matrix and the covariance matrix uh, will always be d cross d we can just uh, assume or we would we, we will just want this um idea that the covariance matrix of a majority category uh, is stable so the minority categories covariance matrix should also appear like it 
and we'll try to make the minority categories covariance matrix also similar to the uh, majority categories uh, covariance matrix and it's just representing the variance between two dimensions and doing that the embeddings learned for the minority category will also be better now coming to the model training part they have uh, the architecture they have two tower model architecture then they have these augmented vectors and they also have the category alignment loss so now the model is uh, ready and uh, how they trained it they took s negative query item pairs and one positive uh, item pair so that is the uh, strategy they use for training and loss functions they have uh, four kind of loss functions right one is a simple cross entropy loss this is the simple cross entropy loss because uh, we want the relevant interactions from the past to come out as one and irrelevant to come out as zero. So that's, that's a vanilla cross entropy loss that every uh, two tower model architecture uses and the other three losses are uh, uh, de depending on the enhancements they have done. So the second loss you can see it's the uh, adaptive mimic mechanism loss and this is a also adaptive mimic mechanism loss so loss u and loss v which is for uh, ensuring this learns the augmented vector au this learns the augmented vector av so this is the adaptive mimic mechanism loss and last loss is the category alignment loss that we want uh, the majority of the categories behavior to be replicated by the minority uh, category as well in their covariance matrix and this lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 are hyperparameter which that how much importance we want to give to the other three losses and doing this they uh, they trained the model and compared it with uh, the vanilla matrix factorization algorithm the which breaks a bigger matrix into uh, tall and thin and f uh, fat and short matrix right that matrix factorization so they compared it with that they also compared it with youtube dnn model they compared it with fm model a two tower model architecture without the enhancements and also in the mind uh, uh, type of architecture these are different model architectures they compared it with both on mutant data their own data and amazon open source data that i was showing and uh, they trained using tensorflow and they compared the results using two mechanism which is hit rate and mean reciprocal rate hit rate basically means that hit rate at 50 would mean out of the 50 items how many were relevant and mean reciprocal rank means which was the first position in which the relevant item was found and you can see that for compared to all the other models they have superior performance and also uh, their uh, hit rate was better and also uh, their MRR was better and also their clicks overall clicks you can see the red line was better than the other baseline models or their present baseline models and also they were getting more GMV which is gross merchandise value more uh, transactions were happening in the platform post this so conclusion is that it's an effective retrieval model dual augmented two tower model architecture dual augmented because we have augmented vectors which has learned through adaptive mimic mechanism and there is a category alignment loss and together these two uh, beautiful ideas enhance their two tower model architecture so that's it in this video in the next video we will use the amazon data set that i was showing to train our own two tower model architecture on search query item uh, problem so stay tuned and so like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye